All right, guys, welcome to Exploring Exponential Models. So uh, the essential understanding today is that we can actually represent repeated multiplication with a function of the form y equals ab to the x, where b is a positive number other, uh, other than 1. Okay, and we'll make some stipulations. So we can represent repeated multiplication using this uh, equation. And it's actually in a, called an exponential function is of this form. That's what we call that function. A can't be 0, B can't be 1, and B also has to be greater than 0. Okay, so in order for this to be exponential, A can't be 0, B has to be greater than 0, but B can't be 1. Okay, 0A is going to be the y-intercept. The domain is going to be all real numbers for this type of uh, exponential function. The range is going to be y is greater than, uh, greater than 0, and the horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals 0. Now, these bottom two can change. Okay, and obviously A can change if A is any number. Okay, but the bottom two uh, can change depending on our, our parameters in the equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to first, our first example is going to graph this exponential function. The first thing you got to know is what does it look like, okay? And so uh, to graph this function, we're going to graph y equals 2 to the x. Um, and for most of these, the easiest thing to do is just create a table of values. So number one, we're going to create a table of values. You're going to plot the points, and then you're going to connect them with a smooth curve. Okay, so here's my table of values. A general domain is really good to use. It's from negative 2 to 2. This is an exponential function, so any x value we choose works. Okay, well, so I plug in all the values. 2 squared, I get 4. Uh, 2 to the first power is 2. Anything to the 0 power is always 1. And 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. Notice how these are just reciprocals or inverses of one another. And please notice that when, even though when a is less than 0 here, your output is going to be greater than 0. These are not negative, even though your x value is uh, negative. So be very careful there. So n second step is after we plot that, make the table, we plot the points. So here's 0, 1. Uh, 1, 2, and uh, 2, 4, and then I connect them in step 3 with a smooth curve. Here's my graph. You can see the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. All my, my graph is above the y-axis, so you know the range is going to be y is greater than 0. Uh, the a value here was 1, so the y-intercept here is 1. Okay, 0, 1. So just some things about that first slide. So that's what that, that graph looks like here. There are two types of exponential functions you can have. You can have either growth or decay. Okay, so uh, exponential growth happens when a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 1. This would be exponential growth. You have decay when a is greater than 0, but b is between 0 and 1. So notice that in both cases, your a value is going to be greater than 0. So that a doesn't tell you growth or decay. It's really b. If b is greater than 1, you have growth. If b is between 0 and 1, you have decay. If b is exponential growth, then we call b the growth factor. If b is between 0 and 1, we call it decay. So here's what the graphs look like. So in red, we've seen that's exponential growth. That's when b is greater than 0, or greater than 1, excuse me. And then we have decay when your b value is between 0 and 1. So it's coming down. Notice how decay is not below the axis. Again, that'll, that'll come later on. But there's the general shape of those two graphs. So there's two types, exponential growth and decay. Uh, decay. Uh, decay, depending on what your B value is, that will tell you whether or not you have growth or decay. Okay, so in this one we're just going to identify equations or situations where we have growth or decay. So that's what this says. Example, hey, tell me whether these functions are growth or decay. So we have three examples here. And two, the first two are just equations. So I look at Y equals 12, okay, times uh, 95 hundredths to the x. There's your b value, okay? So my b value is between 0 and 1, so that means my, fa my uh, equation is exponential decay. My b value is between 0 and 1. Note that in this case, the y-intercept would be 12, okay? In part b, I have 1 fourth times 2 to the x. My b value is 2. Well, 2 is greater than 1, so this is exponential growth. Most of the time, in, in example C here, you're going to see most of the time when you invest money, 
you're going to have exponential growth. It would not make sense for you to invest money where you have exponential decay. Uh, decay really happens as a couple things, but mostly like when you buy a car and it depreciates. Okay, um, you you keep maybe ninety five percent of the value, but um, when you're investing money, as soon as you're saying, yeah, you put money into account, unless uh, you, you want to lose money, this is going to be growth. So I can just tell you that if we put $1,000 into a college savings account for four years, it's going to be growth. Uh, the account pays you 5% interest annually. So this is growth, but it's growth because your, your B value is greater than 1. Why is it greater than 1? Because you're making 100% of your money. In addition, you're making an additional 5%. So you're earning 1.05. Whoops, that shouldn't be percent. Well, yeah, 1.05 on your return, right? Um, because you get your 100% plus your 5%. So uh, our growth factor here is 1.05, which is not much greater, it's barely greater than 1, but it's still greater than 1, so it's still growth. Um, one of the two big equations we can use with exponential, this is just an exponential model, and that's where we get, we'll get the equation from here. Um, so uh, if we're looking at this, um, we're looking at uh, exponential growth or decay model, okay? Uh, a of t is the amount that you have after t years. A is the initial amount. Usually it's what you invest or what you pay. R is your interest rate, and that's as a percent, so be very careful. Uh, and try not to get 5% and 50% mixed up when you do the decimals. That, that can happen. Uh, t uh, is the number of time periods, and usually t is in years, okay? So this is our general equation. We're going to use an example of this now and show you. And it's actually related to that college problem we just did if you invest some money. So if you invest $1,000 in your savings account uh, at the end of sixth grade, the account pays 5%. If you, and if you can find 5% nowadays, that would be extremely great. You're, I don't even think now you can make 1% on your savings. or It's like a tenth of a percent. They're terrible now. But in this account, you, you make 5% interest annually. How much will you have after six years? So I set up my equation and I just substitute. Okay, I have a thousand, that's my initial amount. One plus 0 .05, there's my rate as a decimal. Uh, and so then I have a thousand to the uh, times 1.05 to the six, that's growth. Okay, and so I make approximately, or I'll not make approximately, I will have approximately $1,340.10. And that's if I don't put any additional money into that. If I just put the thousand dollars in there and say, I'll see in six years, um, I've made $340 in interest, okay? So it's not much, okay? Uh, it, but it is, it is, it is 5%. So uh, that's exponential uh, models, it, kind of an introduction to, to exponentials, uh, growth and decay, and then the next uh, uh, section we're going to talk more about exponentials and how to graph them at more in depth. If you have any questions or comments, uh, you can type them below or you can email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov.